Mm. I did, so you're used to it. Yeah. I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right <laughs> with you. Bill Cartwright. And this <coughs> is the Stress Mastery here. Podcast mm. where we That's take you from the science to the spirituality of Stress Mastery. All right. Hello, everybody. We got a little issue here uh, <laughs> with the podcast. So we're going to do a throwback today. And we're going to do episode 879, The Rules of God, because David said, if you're going to do a throwback, give them a good Connection Thursday throwback. What are your thoughts? This is a good one, man. We we spent more time (sighs) looking for a good episode to replace the episode than we do during the podcast. So but. the issue happened was we we're on fulfillment. Today's episode was to be the the goal of fulfillment. And I spent two hours writing this episode and it disappeared. Yeah, technology has not been your friend lately. Technology's been going against me a little bit. So my remarkable, out of nowhere, because we both saw it, just deleted it, disappeared. Oof. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is because we're coming to the end of the book study anyway, we're not gonna do a book study for this Friday. We're gonna put on number eight seventy nine, the rules of God. I think you guys will like this. And tomorrow, I am gonna rewrite that episode because it was a good episode, and I think you guys will enjoy it. And tomorrow we'll catch up on the goals of fulfillment. Yeah, the second take's always better. The though, second right? take, man, man, that's a big second. Hey, this take. is the first. This Almost a, a thousand yeah, episodes. That's this why is I, the first. I can't get mad at remarkable. If it happens again, yeah. I could see that thing <laughs> chucking outside the window. I could see it flying. <laughs> the neighbor's gonna get a new frisbee. Oh my! That tablet's been fantastic for me. So it just worked against me. So guys, enjoy this episode. This is called uh, the Rules of God. And I think you guys are going to like it very much. I will see you guys or hear you guys or be with you guys tomorrow. Friday. We'll see you yep. Friday. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Corey and I am here with that fifth take super millennial, David Bretto. How are you doing, fifth take? Doing good. Every time better than the last. <laughs> we are really having issues here, people. So we're not quite sure how this is going to sound because our mic blew up. After 900 episodes, the mic finally has decided it's not going to work with us anymore. Ran out of willpower. <laughs> ran out of willpower, right? Ran out of something. And so we're recording this kind of the way the super millennial has rigged it for us. So we'll see how it works out. And this week, our topic has been rules. And the rules of our mic says, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> What are your thoughts on that, Super Millennial? I think the mic won. The mic won that one. So today is Connection Thursday, and David has been bothering me because we haven't had an episode that's deep and upset many people lately. He really, that bothers you a little bit, huh? There's not enough things in the world upsetting people. So, so let's have Connection Thursday, and we're going to discuss the rules of God. Is that good enough? Does yeah. that work? They're going to do it. Now, this episode may make some people a little nervous. In fact, the title, The Rules of God, may have prompted many to shut the episode down. And if this subject matter is causing you to feel anxious, you must ask the question, why? Maybe some of you feel that if you do ask the question why, you will be punished While others may be saying, I tune into this podcast to learn how to master stress, and here Courtright is shoving God in my face again. In both cases, the reaction is being caused by the rules we hold around God. You understand that? Yep. So we talked all week that rules are understood regulations designed to govern a group to act in a certain manner. Now, These rules are set through our stages of human development. We've talked about the five stages of development. And there are actually four layers to this development. The first layer being when we're born and we're each born with a purpose. The second layer gets set at six years of age through stage one on the programs that we receive from our environment. Then the third layer of this development is set at 15 years of age when the programmings we receive become set through the experience and the conflict resolutions of stage two. And this sets the ego, the identity, and the rules we live in 
And that takes us into stage three of development. Now, the fourth layer of development is dependent upon one's personal development, their personal growth. This sets stage four. And stage four of development is called the self-authoring mind. And this stage also is when we begin to write our own script for our lives. You Mm -hmm. understand? So the rules of God are set for each of us, whether one is religious or not. Mm -hmm. You understand that, right? It doesn't matter if your family was religious or not. So I was born to a mother who was Italian, and the household she was raised was uber strict Catholic. Now, my father was raised by his parents, my grandfather being of German descent, my grandmother Scottish, uber strict Catholic. (laughs) So one would assume I was raised Catholic, right? Well, my father left the scene early, you know, in my childhood. And my stepfather was an addict and possibly, I can't say this for sure, an atheist. Because we never talked, there was no God in our house. But there was, even though there was no religion, the house still had religious rules enforced by my mother. In other words, Fridays during Lent, we ate fish. How much do I love fish, Dave? (laughs) I was just thinking that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not much, right? But you you were getting fish on Friday. Now, the other thing is my mom had it made it very clear in these early uh years of my life that God is a punishing God. She also said you had to be baptized or you go to hell. Even though we did not go to church, we were still baptized. And another thing was if we tell, we will go to hell. Think about that. Don't tell anything that happens. We will go to hell. Why? Because going against your mother or father was a sin. So the abuse we were in had to stay a secret. So my mom couldn't tell. We couldn't tell because we would all go to hell. And so my first stage of development and my rules for God are programmed. What were your rules like? Um... It, it kind of feels weird because I feel like growing up, everything was slightly re- like religious, but in the household, it wasn't like my mom always listens to this Christian music and mm-hmm. we went to church and then we didn't. And then I ended up going back to church. But growing up, like I knew like, if you lie, life really going to hell. Yeah, go to hell. I don't know. Have you ever sat down and really explored? Except I've really done deep dives and explored this because... One of the things I do in coaching is I will take people back to their childhood and they start discovering things because this is all unconscious. You don't, you don't set your rules. That's what people don't understand. You know, when you're listening to this, you didn't set your rules. Mm -hmm. Because what happened to me then is I get pulled from that abusive environment to be raised by my dad's parents, my grandparents, and they were very strict Catholics. But they were very strict practicing Catholics. They never missed church and observed all the rules of the church. So the first months of living with my grandparents were rough coming out of that because I was always sick. I even got, as I've shared before, shingles. You don't get shingles usually when you're seven, eight years old, but I did. And one of the major reasons I was sick was my God rules. I wouldn't tell my grandparents everything that was going on in the home. Mm -hmm. I refused. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm not telling. I was afraid if I told, I would be punished. And my mom taught us that that punishment wasn't coming from her. It was all about purgatory and hell. I was scared. So my grandparents knew something was wrong. So they took me to the priest, (laughs) Father Peter. And, that, and Father Peter was the head priest of St. Francis Church, and those that are listening to this from my hometown probably know who he is, right? And I can still remember the fear, like it was yesterday. I told him, I can't tell him, because I was told by my mother, if I talk, I go to hell. Remember, I'm, I'm seven years old. So understand that. That's my memory of my seventh year, right? And he explained that. 
Father Peter told me he worked directly for God and that he was the one that I should tell everything because he was God's agent, right? So I spilled my guts and it all came pouring out. And it was actually therapeutical. You know, it was therapeutical for me because I was unleashing it. And when I was done, Father Peter looked at me and told me, Billy, these bad things that happened to you are because you're a sinner. I kid you not, David. Those were his words. Wow. And if I wanted to be forgiven, I had to follow all the rules of being a good Catholic. So I felt better after. I can't lie. I felt better after that meeting with Father Peter, and I committed fully. So what are some of the Catholic rules of God, right? The rules, my rules of God in my early childhood. Well, one is that women will never be priests and must serve the man and the family all because of Adam and Eve. So my, I saw how my grandmother served. She served everybody. Another rule, number two, is no meat on Fridays. Talked about that. Number three rule was the Bible is truth. It's the only book of truth. Number four, must attend mass. You don't dare miss. Number five, there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. If you weren't part of the church, you were condemned. Number six, must be baptized. Everybody has to be baptized. Number seven, must go through the rites of First Communion. Number eight, must confess to a priest. You can't talk to God directly. That's against the rules. Confessions only can happen to the priest. By the way, my first confession was the scariest thing ever. And I remember confessing that I stole something. <laughs> cookies. <laughs> that was the truth. Of I was course. sneaking cookies of up course. into my room. Uh, that was crazy. Now, when you have to confess to the priest, you're going to hell. And number nine Catholic rule is hell is real. And number 10, there's no divorce. You have to support and obey the marriage laws. Number 11, there's no abortion. Number 12, you have to observe the laws of the holidays. And number 13, you must support the church financially and in other ways. So David, I became an altar boy. Thoughts on all those rules? You know, it's weird that growing up, I'm, I was a Christian, right? And I've been baptized and I've been to mass. I've done, you know, it's, it's, it's weird how you try to like, like for me as a, as a kid, I always wanted to like fit in with God. As weird as that sounds, right? That's the so rules, David. Catholic stuff. I was like, I'm not doing that. So I, I wanted to do that. And then I was like, oh, but I'm Christian. What does that mean? So I felt like I was missing, you know, well, some of these rules. So as a you kid. see, right? So why did I list those rules? Because every Christian out there. It was the Roman Catholic Church that set the rules for all churches that spin off. Mm -hmm. So you might not be Catholic, but you got some of those rules. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's why I set them. Now, there's a lot of rules. And there's a lot of rules for one to be worthy of God. There's a lot of rules there. And in truth, few, if anyone, can follow all these rules. But need not worry in the Catholic Church. It doesn't matter what you do. Just hit the confessional, and the priest will absolve you of your misdeeds. Many gangsters are Catholic. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you put Uncle George in the tub and drop him in the river. As long as you go to confession, you'll be just fine. <laughs> so what is the unwritten rule of the Catholic Church? There's an unwritten rule. It's control through guilt. That's the rule. And if we look, if you really, we each look, at our personal rules of God, just as David just stated, you have to understand to be really honest with that is a very difficult task. For our rules of God have been passed on through centuries, many generations, whether you're aware of it or not. So David just kind of put out there, we didn't talk, you didn't know what I was doing today, right? But you could see how the conflict, right? Yeah. Well, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a Catholic. But in our city, it was Lutheran was a very strong religion. And Catholics were kind of the outcasts. 
in, in the city where I come from, the area I come from. So it starts with what we believe is our connection to God. Is this connection, the question I pose to you, is this connection one of love, joy, and peace? Or is your God connection one of fear and guilt? Because if it's truly a connection to love, this connection must be in the heart, which means it cannot be in fear and guilt. And when our God rules are connected to fear and guilt, God is connected to the ego. It's just the way the wiring works, correct? Yeah. So one can easily do a quick deduction if this is the, your case by looking at the ego and the base of the ego, which is the wants. So number one, the want of approval. Do you believe to be connected to God? You must not sin. You must do this or must do that. Then you are worthy of God connection. This want to get God's approval will set many rules to be followed. If you fail, you will land in guilt, right? Let's say number two, are your God rules built in the want to belong? Do you believe that to connect to God, you must be a, have a certain identity? And all others outside that identity are condemned. This want puts you, pits you against others and puts you in a state of separation and sets one on the course to convert those non-believers. And these rules create separation, hate, and war. Let's look at God rule number three, the want of security. Do you believe God is punishing that you must be perfect to get connection to God. That if you are not perfect, you will go to hell. This is the want that creates fear, anxiety, doubt, and worry. In this want, the rules will keep you in a state of guilt and unworthiness. You're with me so far, right, David? Yeah. Number four. Do you think God broke the mic? You think we should just cancel this episode now? You better hope not, because that means your phone's next. <laughs> Number four, the want of control is a God rule. Think of the want of control, David. Do you believe you must control things in your life to be connected to God? And when you lose control, that the loss of control and something coming into your life causing disruption is because you are being punished by God. It's your fault this or that happened. The rules built off this want keeps one in a victim type energy, never quite good enough. So they must try harder to control their moods, to control people, to control their life. And this sticks you in a state of desire and guilt. Make sense? Those are God rules. Yeah, I even think people from from my experience try to change, I, I would say normal challenges that people face right like let's say they lost their house or a car or something it's because i had too much god wants to humble me or something like that and i'm like uh no you you, you lost your car because you missed a few payments like there's <laughs> yeah. things that you need there to are do. things right and property and yes. material doesn't make you any less of it but to feel better and like you said to control it they're going to change the narrative to feel better about it you know, and, 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 and people go, well, is that bad, David? Is that bad, Bill? It's not that it's bad. The question is, is it serving you? Is, your, is, it, is it bringing you peace and joy to do that? I don't know. Or is it the reality? Or, you know, because a lot of times when you go dive deeper into it, oh, you missed this because you did this and your vacation was here and you were yeah. doing this. But that's not God doing it. That's you doing it. <laughs> exactly. Because we always, right? That's yeah. how we're using it. We're looking at God again, the connection. When you look at it that way outside yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, some people rely on the Ten Commandments as their God rules, right? You know? And so if we look at these commandments, thou shall have no other gods before me. This rule will be set through one's perception, who is their God, right? Mm -hmm. What's your definition? Yeah. Uh, next, honor thy father and thy mother. This rule can be hard if your mother and father abuse you. That was my case. But... If it's a rule, you will not defend yourself. Yeah. I would not tell I became a victim because of that rule. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another rule. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This comes down to the belief carried, right? 
What is your Sabbath day? Some people it's Saturday. Some people it's Sunday. Some people have rules built around that day, right? What happens if you break one of those rules? Do you punish? Are you punished for it? Are you stuck in guilt? Does it wreck the rest of the week? Here's another. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image. Graven image is an object of worship, by the way. This is an image or object to worship God. Thus, this rule states, if you follow this rule, if you're one that worships the cross as God, you're actually breaking this rule. Yeah. Right? They even say it with Jesus. Yes. They say worship Jesus because he's not God. And I put that with the quotations for it. They say that that's breaking the commandment. Yes, it's breaking the rule, oh, right? God, and especially for right? Catholic and all the saints and stuff. Oh, it boy, it's it. a lot. <laughs> Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy oh, God in vain. vain. This rule is using God's name to commit evil or pretend to serve in the name but fail to do so. Now look at this rule closely. That's exactly what it is. You're not using God's name to commit evil, but how many out there pretend to serve in God's name but fail to do so? So the rule is clear. You go to church, you pray, you learn to love your neighbor, David, and then you leave and you curse out anyone you see not wearing a mask. Rule broken. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not yeah. trying to be flippant or anything. I'm really trying to just bring things into the light. And you're the one who told me to do these deep episodes because <laughs> it's been so long, right? Thou shall not kill. Pretty solid rule there, right? But is it? If one goes to war or kills in self-defense, are they by the rule condemned? The English transition of this passage is thou shall not murder. Just so you know, if you do the translation properly, and killing and murder are very, very different, I would think. I think they're different anyways. This rule is conflictive if you kill another in combat or self-defense. Murder is basically taking a life with no moral justification. Would you agree? Yeah. I don't know. And maybe I'm so, wordplaying So I've that. actually asked uh, my youth pastor in high school because I wanted to become a police officer. And this is where I was really deep into it at the time. And I asked him, mm -hmm. I said, so if I have to protect myself on a job, am I... You know, do I break this commandment? And also the same way with, like you said, somebody breaks into your house and you mm -hmm. use self-defense, right? And, and you're his, defending your family. And his yeah. answer was, he goes, well, there's rules that go against rules in the Bible because the man is supposed to defend his family no matter what. And that right there, I was like, wow. Pretty conflictive, huh? Yeah, he said, you make your own judgment. And that, for me, I was like, religion is not really about my own judgment, I, though. <laughs> I'm telling you, David, there's a reason I wanted to do this episode on rules because you're right. It's conflictive, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't think about this very much because it's never brought out in light like this. So yeah. these these conflicts we have are inner conflicts. Yeah, especially because it... A lot of the stuff we're taught is not to have our own judgment, but that we're being judged. So all these rules we're supposed to take literal yes. versus our judgment. So, David, thou shall not commit adultery. This rule states not to have intercourse with another man's wife. Also, there shall be no intercourse with a woman without a previous marriage. So, by the way, the rule states that the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. Just want to throw that out there, everybody. If you want to really, if you're really following the rules, Get you might stay home. Stay home. <laughs> Don't do it. Here's one: Thou shall not steal. Rule sounds clear to me. How about you? Yeah. Well, the Jewish commentaries refer to stealing as that of an actual human being. In other words, kidnapping. <laughs> Most interpret the rule based on theft, right? Yeah. So, Dave, what is right? What are the rules of God? You've, you, in this conversation alone, you've had at least three incidents of conflict already in just our talk of starting this, right? Yeah, so for time's sake, it's you know? only three. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So I can't answer the question. It's impossible for me to answer the question on what are the rules of God. Many people have turned away from religion and they say, I'm not religious, Bill. I'm spiritual. I believe in God, but not religion. Okay. So what does that mean? What are God's rules for you spiritual people? So many people will say they believe in energy. God is energy. Okay. 
So what does that mean? What are your rules of God as energy? Many people believe in Buddhism now, right? Buddhism does not have a belief in a personal God. Buddhism is about a quest for enlightenment. Okay, what are your rules for enlightenment? See, are you willing to follow you Buddhists out there listening? Are you willing to follow the path of Buddha? Because you know Buddha left his spouse, his children, and his family on his quest for enlightenment. And fortune. Everybody. <laughs> he left everybody, right? So are you willing to do that? Are you willing to walk out today and say, I'm following Buddha? You know, some, some people after this quarantine and lockdown might, might be like, they might do it. we'll give it a shot. There you go. <laughs> but I'm telling you, people don't think of things mm-hmm. like this, right? You see... Everyone listening, our spiritual development is very important as human beings. When we look at those levels of development as human beings, that first level is your purpose. You're born into this world. That second level, you're programmed into ego and identity. Then that third level, you live by the rules that were given to you and set in the ego and your identity. This third level is us living our lives through the programs, the rules, the perceptions set for us from previous generations in time. And in this level of living in stage three socialized mind, we live history over and over and over. Rules are carried from thousands of years ago to be lived in a time, in a place that bears no resemblance of the times when those rules were originally set. Yeah. Right? So, and people will come to me and say, but Jesus set the rules. I have to stay with Christians because where I lie, right? But did Jesus really set the rules because the Catholic Church didn't set the rules until, what was it, 300 years after his death? That's when the rules were set. And he so, didn't even write the book that everybody Yes, he didn't write that book, right? <laughs> so, did he really set the rules? Yeah. And that's what I'm asking. So, there is this fourth level of human development, and this is the level of growth and awakening. Awakening is key for this level. This is when we begin the process of self-authoring our life. And the moment one makes a choice to set their life, right, to self-author their life, David, the moment that happens, one must question the rules that have built their current life situation, right? Yeah. The current life situation you live in, everything in your life right now exists from the rules that you have lived. And this will include, if you're ready to really step out and change your life, and you're really ready to question those rules, you must include the rules you have about God, spirituality, energy, or even atheism. Correct? You have to question them. So no one can do this process for you. I don't have answers. And this self-authoring process has distinctly three levels to it. One, we talk about it all the time, David, awareness. That's the first level. You become awake, acutely aware that the rules, the habits, the belief systems you have, you have had set for your life are no longer serving you. This usually comes in some type of crisis or an illness or a loss of job, broken relationships, maybe some addiction, but usually some type of major disruption creates this awareness that, wow, my life doesn't work, right? So you have awakening, awareness. Well, the second part is education. The awareness pushes you to learn. And you want to learn first, why is my life so chaotic? And second, what changes of the rules can I do to transform my current life situation? And then you have to go to the third part of this change. You got to have experience. Exactly, David. Experience. The fact is knowledge doesn't change the human being. Only knowing and That only knowing changes the human being, and this only comes through experience. It's going through the process and making the changes that sets the new rules, which sets the new behaviors, which creates the new life situation. So Dave, I can only speak on my rules of God, and it's been decades of education and experience that have shaped 
these particular rules. These are my five rules of God, okay? Mine, no opinions, mine. <laughs> Not David is exempt from these rules, mine. First, God is all, God is substance, God is all source, God is everything. Second, God is the state of love, joy, and peace. In this state, there is no good, there is no bad, it just is. God is not an emotion, it's a state. Third, I come from God and I am here to experience life, to reunite in union with God and all. Fourth rule, my purpose is to raise energy. This is done by seeing my brother and sisters. And that means I see them below their ego, the mask they wear, the identity. And fifth, my function here is to be the light. This simply means not to feed the darkness, the ego. But again, it kind of goes with rule number four, to see the truth, the person lying below the mask. So those are my rules, David. You, I know I didn't let you prep for this, but you did try to get out of it by breaking the mic. Would you like to give your rules of God or do you need to give that more thought? No, I think I'm, I'm like a lot of people. I don't have rules because I haven't had, I, well, I say I don't, I haven't had the religious experience or the mm-hmm. actual, the God experience yet. Cause I've had the religious experience. But for me, the, the two things that, that I believe in, in my kind of search through this experience of it is, is that if you're going through it, no matter what your religion or whatever it is, if those rules don't serve you, it's not for you. And when I say it doesn't serve you, I don't mean that it's like selfish, like it benefits you and not the other. It's those rules are expanding and furthering your growth, right? For me, going to a Christian church a lot of rules served me and I still follow those. The ones that don't, I've continued my search to find something that works for me in my growth. So if it doesn't serve you, I think that's one where you start to question, is this right for you or not? And the second thing is, I don't know and I haven't experienced 100%, but I know no matter what it is that God is my source. So if it's in a negative, that's my source. If it's money, that's my source. If it's cars, that's it. Whatever that aim is, Mm -hmm. right? That's what it is. And that's the way that I always look at it. It's, you know, if if I, while I was in church and I was very religious, if I was focusing on the church, that was that, right? And then when I would focus on, oh, I got to work extra this week. So I miss church and I do that. That job became my God. And I missed the other God completely. Right. And that's what I mean by like it being your source and it being your God. It's you, you have to have the right focus and make sure the rules are serving you for an expansion. That was great. That was good because you're young. Right. Yeah. So my awareness came when I was very young. I've talked about that story a little bit when my dad wasn't allowed in the church because he was divorced mm-hmm. and my grandmother didn't have an answer. And that kind of broke the crack of all the rules. And even for years still, I faked going to church because I didn't want to disappoint them. I really didn't want to. I loved my grandparents so much and everything they did for me. So I would sell papers outside the church. Me and Mark, it was not Mark Middlestead, but I, I, I can't use his name because obviously, <laughs> name. but we used to sell papers outside, but I would listen to the mass and then go home and give a report who would, what the mass was on. <laughs> so I did that for years, right? I got away with it for a long time. And, but it was, that was when awareness started. Then a lot of education. I've traveled, I've read, I've studied, I've gone through a lot. I have a lot of experience. And as I get more and more experience, I find it the less I know. It's really weird. The more experience I get, the less I know. You know, like I said, to me, I know the state. I know it's like to be peaceful and really have a state, but I don't really know anything. (laughs) I just, I know it sounds horrible, right? Just don't know. I don't know. But I have gotten to the point where I don't look at things as bad or good. You've seen, we've gone through several things over these last years. Mm-hmm. You see it just like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's go here. Because I that's one thing that I've learned, but I still don't know anything. 
Yeah, I just know one thing, and, and no matter what your religion or your God or whatever it is, it shouldn't make you feel like crap. It and shouldn't that was, lock you in a guilt. And right? that's what that's what it did it yeah. for me. I was working on it. I was a Bible study teacher. I was a youth teacher. I did the sound booth. I did everything. I was at church four days a week, and every week it was worse. You know, so when I, was, when I was an altar boy, I got to wear a little gown. I got to be up there. I got to hold a little plate under when they did communion. <laughs> I was playing you know, good music in the back. Yeah, you know, I, I so just got to tell you, experience. I was in this thing. I was in. <laughs> That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. Any emails from today's show, it's david at livingrightwithbillcourtright.com. Any hate mail, please go to him. Anybody who wants to have a conversation and would like some, my, to ask me some questions, then you can email me. You can join <laughs> us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. Links are right below the show. You ready? I hope so. As always, until next time, stay inspired.